Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, our friends. Good morning, our followers, our customers. We are so honored to have you with us this morning as we celebrate Women's Day, Centenary Bank style. And uh, our theme is celebrating women that mean business. I'm sure you can see it on the scroll. And we're very excited today because we are celebrating with two women that are making it out there that we want to learn from. And uh, the whole world over is celebrating Women's Day tomorrow. And the theme is inspiring inclusion, you know. And there's a lot that has been done globally, even in our country to include women. And here we have two ladies that are going to share with us how the inclusion has supported them, how they mean business and what we can learn from them. So we have coach Marjorie Namakula. Marjorie, you are very welcome. Hi, Ellen, can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Looking oh, great. Thank you so much for having me. We can see the books in the background. Oh, yes. About <laughs> you. <laughs> so thank Marjorie you. there is a seasoned coach. She's a financial expert growth coach she's talked to people about managing retirement she's coming at the bank talk to us how to start business how to stay in their discipline issues of discipline there's a lot that we got from and you know these are things you don't get enough of so we're looking forward to hear more from you you're very welcome Marjorie, today thank you. Thank you celebrating so it the centenary bank we you know <laughs> women that mean business we also have uh, Mrs. Lutaya Teddy Nantongo. Um, Teddy is our customer. Teddy is a superwoman. Central Bank has a superwoman product. She's been with us for a couple of years. Teddy is a wife, a mother. Teddy is a farmer. She has a business, printer business. Teddy was a youth entrepreneur selected just a few years ago among the people who represented our country to learn more. She came back as a train of trainers. Teddy, we are honored to have you this morning and we want to hear from you celebrating women that mean business. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you, dear. How are you? I am okay. We are very fine. Thank you so, so much. All right, I think um, we can start off. International Day, International Women's Day is tomorrow. And as I've already highlighted, the global theme is on inspire inclusion. And uh, let me start with the coach. <laughs> coach Marjorie, what does this mean to you? Um, inspiring uh, inclusion as a theme globally and also mm -hmm. as a coach for financial management and growth what does this theme mean to you in regard to what is happening to women right now in our country or yes uh, thank you so much alan i think it is really timely and i know that men are like ah, oh, why are you only celebrating women but we believe we celebrate men every day that's why we are celebrating women on women's day so please allow us to enjoy ourselves but i believe it's really timely because even when most people feel like, no, there are lots of programs on women empowerment, everything is women, 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 the gap is still there. So I think it's really timely to talk about conversations of inclusiveness or inclusivity. How do we bring more women on board? Because even when we see that women are going up, even the corporate ladder, women, uh, the biggest number of uh, entrepreneurs or people that start businesses is also women. We still need to bring up women up to speed to be inclusive in all the opportunities when it comes to empowering the people in the corporate world or even the businesses we still need to have the women on board because even when it feels like there are very many programs still the victims the highest number of, of victims of the people that are not included are still women and yet research actually shows that it is the women that are mostly uh, participating in all these programs or maybe even the unpaid labor that is happening. It could be at home and also women that are taking on uh, very low pay 
jobs. So it is still uh, necessary for us to talk about inclusion when it comes to uh, women because the gap is still there. So I think it's really timely to see how do we bring more women on board. And like I always say, there is enough room for all of us up there because some people think, ah, but now we already have women up there. Why are we bringing other women on board? But I always know that there is enough room for all of us. And also in this world where it is highly competitive with our counterparts, our partners, the male, we need to empower the ladies as well to be able to stand up and take on these positions and be able to run successful businesses, not just starting a small shop next to their home, but having a fully fledged business that can actually be able to come in and uh, answer issues related to unemployment. We see very many of those, even when Uganda is one of those most entrepreneurial countries, why? Because most people start just a small business for them. They open their small shop to take care of them and their families. But now we need to have them included to a point where they can have businesses that even are able to employ or to absorb all these huge number of people that are leaving universities. So I think it's really timely to talk about inclusion and how we can have the women uh, participate and be on top of their game as well to take care of all the needs that we have as a country and as a continent. So I'm really excited to, to see more of the inclusion. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And, and you've talked about two words that uh, caught my attention. One is empowerment, you know, yes. empowerment and growth. And mm -hmm. of course, finances play a very big role when it comes to being empowered, when it comes to yes. growing. And, and, and I believe that's where you come in. You know, so yeah. as an expert, really, how do you advise women on those issues? Uh, how do they start? How do yeah. they maintain financial stability? You're talking about having a, a big business and not only that small shop, you know, that kiosk, yes. you know, so empowerment, growth, finances. Please advise us. Yes. So when we talk about uh, empowerment and finances, I always tell people, start with the end in mind. There is one of the books that I really love. Uh, it's called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of the habits shared in there uh, is habit number two. Begin with the end in mind. That as you start this business, what is the vision that you have? Because if you're just starting this business for you to get food to take care of you and your children, maybe tomorrow, then that business will not grow. So I tell people, I tell women, start with the end in mind. Have a vision for your life. It is not that you just have to wake up, make money today, and then that's it. No. Have a long-term vision. Where do you see yourself? And I know most people hate that question. Whenever they ask you, where do you see yourself in five years? And someone was joking recently that you're asking me where I see myself five years. I don't even know where I'm going to be tomorrow. <laughs> but it's important. <laughs> it's important for us to ask ourselves, where do you actually see yourself? Because then that will inform the goals that you set. That will inform how you run your business because you have something bigger to look up to. So I tell people, I tell women, start where you are. First, find out what is my current situation when it comes to finances. Am I employed? Do I have a small business? Or I don't have anything at all. That is where it starts. Then after you have found out your current situation, ask yourself, where do I want to go? What do I want to achieve? Because I talk about personal finances, every year we have what you call a vision board party, where we come together with friends, we set our goals, we put images of the things we want to achieve in our career, in our businesses, in our family, in our physical life, financial goals, and things like that. And that is to help you see that direction. Because if you don't have where you want to go, then you cannot achieve it. You'll stay stuck in your comfort. Some people get even these salaries and they're comfortable where they are. But when you have a goal, it takes you out of your comfort zone to say, okay, I need to do more. I need to do better. So find out your current uh, financial position, where you are now, find out where you want to go, and then ask yourself, what can I do now? And usually I tell people, when you're on this journey, work on your mindset. Ask yourself, what else can I do? Most of the people, we do things because we think that is all I can do. That maybe me, I can't thrive in business. I should just open my small shop. Or maybe me, my job is to just get uh, to go look for a job. And even when they look for a job, they don't have the, the confidence to 
negotiate their salaries. And that is one of the things that are killing us as women. Because you'll find a woman doing the same role with the man, and they're getting almost quarter the amount the man is getting. And that is why I said the inclusion theme is really, really timely. That how can we empower the ladies to actually stand up and negotiate what they are worth? So it is important. And usually when men hear that, oh, we are teaching, we are empowering women to stand up for what is what they feel like we are teaching them to fight. No, we are not. But we need to get to a point where women know what they are contributing to the society or to even that company. And then they're able to stand and negotiate for what is worth. Because we believe that you do not have what you need because you don't negotiate for it. Same thing with business. You need to get to a level where you have worked on your business and it doesn't need to be a big business, but at least let it have the basics of a business. Have When people here have, have systems, they feel like, oh my God, I need a system like Centenary Bank. No, you do not. Start with the basics. Have your simple books of accounts. Have, find out how much did I sell? What are my expenses? Things like that, because then that also uh, gives you an opportunity to attract funding for your business. But if you're just looking at oh, let me make this business to get money for today, then you're not able to tap into those opportunities. So start where you are, find out where you want to go, and then ask yourself, what do I need to do to achieve what I want to achieve? And then seek help. Look for this information. It is available. I encourage women, it should be collaboration over competition. I tell people there is enough room for all of us. That is why usually when you find people doing the same businesses, and when you go downtown in Kampala, you'll find that, very many shops, people are selling the same things, but they're all making sales. What does that mean? There is enough room for all of us. So if you're a person that has gone ahead, be able to mentor someone, a lady that is starting. You see someone that is starting a business, be able to mentor them. Because yes, you'll have your customers. And then this person also needs to come in and serve other people. Even if you have the biggest shop, you cannot serve all the 40 million Ugandans. So let us have an open mindset. Let us be open to collaboration, helping, supporting other women, because then that is how we are going to move up together as women. So find out where you are, find out where you want to go, and what help you need in between. If you want to start that business, before you even start the business, you can find a business that is already successful doing the business you want to start. And then go and get hired there. If they tell you there are no opportunities, offer to volunteer there. It is better than you getting your money you've saved, you start your business and it fails. Rather you go, you can even say, maybe I'm going to volunteer for six months. You're learning how the business is run. Where do they get their clients? Who are the suppliers? Not that you're going to copy what you're seeing here, but you're getting an insight on how business is run. And that is very important for you. So I hope that helps for the ladies, even the men that are listening. That's Marjorie, your that is very, very spot on. Thank you for the advice. You know, collaboration, yes. <laughs> seeking help, and dreaming big. You know, ladies, I'm sure we are being challenged. Dream big. And, and I think that dream can keep expanding on the way, you know. Oh, you yes. May started, <laughs> you may have started with something small, but as you get exposed, as you speak to other women, as you go for the coaching sessions, as you read, as you, you know, know what's happening out there. And, and your dreams really go beyond borders. I think that's, that's good. So, and, and at this moment, allow me to bring in Teddy, because I believe Teddy is one who has dreamed. <laughs> the fact that she has more than one business. She's, she's actually, I did mention she's a community leader. She, she also, she's a leader in her church. So, um, Teddy, I want to welcome you and uh, just thank you of, of, of your business and how you run all those businesses, you run uh, the leadership in your community and how you manage to do it. Just as Marjorie has said, sometimes we think you, know, you have that one thing only and do that only and, and get satisfied. But clearly, that's not your stance. Clearly, you're doing quite a number of things and doing more right now than you are using entrepreneur. So share with us how you're managing and what drives you. And uh, as a woman, what advice would you have for us uh, in that area of business? 
You're welcome, Tim. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alain. Uh, Teddy is an entrepreneur, Teddy is a civil servant, Teddy is a leader, Teddy is a, ma uh, a wife to someone. Yes, it's quite hard to balance all these things. However, if you have, if you have a vision, sometimes if you have a calling, if you, are, if you really have someone you look up to, you really want to be like that person and you always do things driving you to be that person. Uh, me, as I was growing, my mentor was my mother, very hardworking. She's there and there like me. Um, so this really, really motivated me. I wanted to be like her. Uh, so I, when, when, when things become bad, I always consult my mentor. So I really want to be that woman who is looked upon on, who inspires others in business, in community, uh, and also in you know informal work. Because I told you I'm a civil servant, I'm an agriculture officer in Chotera district. I teach farmers. Uh, I encourage people to join farming because farming is also now a very, very good business. I normally rest. I normally rest. I give myself little time to rest because, as you see, I have a lot at hand. Sometimes even I use the night hours to work. Remember, Monday to Friday, I have to be at work. Uh, we, Saturday, I have to audit books at NASA Road, the business, and also visiting the farm. So I normally also use evening time, night time when people are sleeping, I wake up, audit books, uh, also do some house, house chores, uh, washing, laundry, like that. So I think we can balance, we can balance like I've been. Uh, Sunday is time for others. Huh? Since I'm a leader, I give Sunday a sign for other people in the community, uh, at church, uh, also here at the community where I, I reside. Yes. Yes, Alan. All right. Thank you, Teddy. Teddy, I'm smiling because, you know, as you kept saying, Sunday is for others. You wake up in the night when others are sleeping. You know, what you do is very, very intentional and it is possible. You, you must plan it out and follow the plans. And, and you said something similar to what Marjorie is saying, is the vision. You must know where you're going, where you won't go anywhere. And I think we are picking up that. But also the issue of the mentor. I think it's very important to have a place where you can go to when things are bad, as you've said, or when you need to learn more. And uh, Marjorie also pointed on that, that if you want to do a business, you can go and volunteer somewhere. You can go and learn. That's just another uh, area, another you know place that can play as a mentor. Learn what they say, uh, learn how they do it, you know, be consistent and get afraid. So at least your money doesn't go to, you don't get a shocker. <laughs> you know the bumps even before you get there. That is true. So Teddy, I also know you've been with us, the Superwoman products. Uh, you've been our customer for a couple of years. And uh, we want to hear from you. You know, when you hear a testimony from a customer, it's more believable than when you read the advert. So Teddy, what has been your experience with the Superwoman products? Thank you very much, Alain. I joined the Superwoman Club in 2016. I, when I saw that advert of Superwoman, I felt it was the right club I should join. And I joined it, opened up a Superwoman account. Oh God, it, it really changed me. First of all, we, had, we have those meet and greets. Meet and greets with other women, other super women. What I loved most was Centenary Bank bringing my mentor near to me, my business mentor, that is Dr. Maggie Chigozi. 
we had a meet and greet at Africana. I would even sat near her on the same table. We discussed issues. That was a very, very deep for Missionary Bank. I appreciate. You really brought my mentor near me through the meet and greet. She was too far, far, far from me. But when I joined the club, we became colleagues. Uh, the second thing, we receive financial literacy uh, trainings as super women, guiding us on how to make visions, guiding us on how to live upon our budgets. So this has really also kept me on the direction of my vision and also uh, spending within my means so that I can invest more. Uh, then also, it has also given me a chance to advertise my business. We normally, there is normally this Poesa, exhibitions for Poesa. We are normally given a big tent as super women in the Nari Bank to exhibit our products, to exhibit our services, to exhibit what we do. So Senary Bank gives us that platform of advertising our businesses as a super women. And by the way, before we even used to be insured, health insurance, we were insured, we were given certain salons where we could get hair products on discounts. Um, so I've really, really benefited from the bank, the loan, that loan without collateral, my dear. We, I appreciate it very much because it pushes you somewhere, somewhere. So those are some of the few I've benefited. I've also, Sundari Bank, as Alan told you earlier, in 2017, Sundari Bank recommended me to UNDP, United Nations Development Program. It was running an agricultural program studying about organic agriculture and then coming back to implement it in Uganda. We were only 13 youth from Uganda and Senori Bank recommended me just because I'm their super women. When they put the advert on the group, I said, me, I can fit in that. So they recommended me, I didn't do any interview. Uh, and the trip, the study was fully, fully sponsored. And uh, then from the tree, from the start day, you could come back and have a job automatically. So I really, really appreciate the bank. Thank you very much for all these opportunities to give us ladies. So ladies out there, please come join us in the Super Women Club and also benefit from what we are benefiting. Over to you, Alan. Thank you very much. All right, Teddy. Thank you, Teddy. Thank you for working hard as well. And as Teddy has invited everyone out here, the Superwoman, Superwoman Club has lots of goodies for you, lots of advantages. We have that loan, you know, we have the meet and greets, we do the financial literacy, we have the one-on-one -on -one mentorships. We do so much and uh, we keep improving it. Some of the advantages are categorized depending on the trade where you are. But we really want to see that women are coming out, women are growing, women are being empowered, and women are changing our nation. So just call us on our toll free. Alan, I don't seem to hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. Alan, can you hear me? Alan, I can't hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. I 
I was not able to hear the question. Alain, I think we lost you at a certain point, so I was not able to get the question. You can kindly repeat that. I don't know if Teddy, you were able to hear. Alain, we lost you at a certain point. Were you muted? Are you able to hear me? Yes, Alan, can you hear me? Oh, you cannot hear me. Teddy, are you able to hear me? Hello. Perfect. Perfect. We have you back. <laughs> we had lost you. Sorry, I didn't hear the question. If you can kindly repeat that for me, and then I can. Oh, share. apologies. Must have been uh, IT here. I was okay. following from what Teddy has shared. Yes. And I'm thinking, yes, we've heard her story and how she started. But I know a couple of ladies out there that go for these sessions and, you know, even told to write your vision. The visions are written. They are told how to, uh, for these two weeks, go try to put record keeping your finances, personal finance. Yes. They also follow that. But then you meet each other after, say, six months. Still nothing has started. So yeah. I'm saying, um, apart from what we've heard from Teddy, through experience with other women, where does the push come from? Where do you really start and, 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 and change the mannerisms of saying, okay, I'll be using two hours in the night to balance books, okay? Yes, yes I'm going mm -hmm. to get into this. Let me go and volunteer. At, at how do you get that push to start? In fact, I was reading somewhere how uh, these ladies collected money and had all these business ideas, but they never started any, you know, and and it, it, it is just that, you know, uh, please advise us. Uh, thank you so much. So like you said, sometimes you can give the same information or sometimes people can be exposed to the same opportunities and everything, but you find that some are thriving and others have not actually taken any step sometimes it goes back to the why so there is a book actually that i love called start with why you need to ask yourself why am i starting this business why do i want to start this business because if you do not have a why if you don't have a reason why you are starting that business or why you're doing that course why you are doing what you're doing then you'll not be able to achieve so it is important for us to find out deep down in your soul why do you want to do this do you want to do this because everyone else is doing it then trust me you'll not be able to achieve you'll start along the way and you'll give up so you need to have a very strong why why you want to do that thing that you want to do because then your why will keep you going what that means is that the road will not be smooth it will not be easy but if your why is strong enough you'll keep going. Alan has mentioned how people put in extra time, people wake up early. I run a 5 a.m. club, so we wake up every morning at 5 a.m. and get on the call and enrich our personal development. It's a personal growth space for us to learn. And people also ask me, Majo, how do you balance this? You're a mother, you're a wife, you're, you're a career person, you're doing this. Today we see you speaking here, team building and all those things. And I tell, I tell people, 
5 a.m. is one of the things that have helped me put my line in order. Because then, yes, you wake up a bit earlier, but then you have time for yourself to do that course you want to do. If there is an online course that you want to do, to research more, to write those books, to come up with those creative ideas. So it goes back to why are you doing the thing you're doing? And I've seen this happen, happening as well. You get very many people, you get women, you're mentoring them, and then you find that some people are thriving and others are not even moving. So the first thing usually is the why, the reason why we're doing this. And sometimes it is not big enough. The why is not yet big enough. And we are still okay in our comfort. We're like, if I do this thing and it works, that would be good. But if it doesn't, that's not the end of the world. Whenever you still have that option, you'll not push. You'll be like, if it doesn't work, that's it. But if you want it so bad, you'll do whatever it takes to get it done. So you need to get to a level where you are tired of your comfort zone, where you are tired of your current situation. That is one of the things that will push you to keep going because that is when motivation comes in. And we know that motivation is two-way. It can be your own motivation and your why may be the motivation that keeps you going. And sometimes it can be motivation from out. It could be maybe your mentor, your coach, the other people around you and things like that. But everything should start with you from within because what happens when there is no one to motivate you? It has to be you to keep yourself going. So the why should be strong enough why are you starting that business? There is what you call the seven levels of why. That if you say, oh, why are you starting that business? Maybe I want to get money to take care of my children. Why do you want to get money to take care of your children? Then you keep asking yourself the why such that you dig up that very strong reason that will keep you going, that will push you extra hours, that will get you out of bed before the world is up, that will push you to look for these mentors that will push you to attend these sessions, even when they require you to pay for them. And I usually tell people, you need to learn to invest in yourself because these workshops or these places where we get to and you actually need to pay could be the places that take you to the next level. But we are even lucky that Centenary has this platform of super women that you may not necessarily maybe pay to be a part of the mentorships that they bring you, the trainings that they give you. Get into those spaces because then those can help you straight. When you see other people uh, achieving, you're like, okay, I should also keep going. So that means you need to learn to be inspired by other people's success. If you're the person who feels terrible when people are achieving, then it is hard for you to achieve because then you need to start associating yourself with celebrating the success of others because we believe that is in a way to show you that if this person can achieve it, you can also achieve it. But you need to have a strong why. Why are you doing the thing that you are doing? Because that will help you push through until you succeed. If you don't have a why, you'll do it because all your friends are doing it. And before you know it, you'll give up. And that is the same thing we see in businesses. Someone starts a business because they see one person has done it and they have built houses, they have bought, they're like, you know what, I'm also starting the same. They start the same business and they put all their hard uh, earned money or all their hard uh, uh, saved money, they put it in that business and then it dies totally. They lose the business and they lose all their savings. So before you even start the business, ask yourself, why am I starting this business? Because there are very many business. Why this one? You also need to have a passion for what you are doing. There are people that say, oh, no, forget passion, make the money. I tell people you can make money from your passion. I had a job before this. I was a finance and operation somewhere. But eventually, I quit my former employment to do something that I'm passionate about, and that is empowering other people, lifting other people, knowing that they can have, they can actually achieve all these things that they want to achieve, and being that person to guide them on the journey. And it has paid off big time. It has opened doors that my job would not open. So I tell people, also the work that you're doing, have a bit of passion for it, because maybe sometimes you just open the business because that is what is trending, at that time but also if you choose something you're passionate about a business that you're passionate about then it can help you uh push through the passion can also drive you it can be the motivation to keep you going but i also tell people passion is not enough it is not that because i'm passionate about this job i'll make the money no passion is not enough yes have the passion but then if you're running the business then you need to have a bit of experience in that business even when you are uh, passionate about it. Have the bit of experience and then 
put up a few at least systems that run a business. Don't just say, ah, this is just my passion. I do it when I want, when I don't want. No. If you're turning your passion into the business, then the passion is not enough. Have the passion because it will keep you going. But then also put in place a, a, some bit of system, some uh, business ethics that can help you sustain a business. So why do some people fail? Sometimes it goes back to the why. And sometimes it is the motivation. Maybe they started a business and they didn't have passion for it. So all those things should be in play to help you push you to the next level. But also the people you surround yourself with. Sometimes, you know, you come and share your business idea with a friend and they're like, hmm, you want to start this? Did you see so-and-so? They also tried it and failed. Did you see the other one? He also failed. Even this one failed. So that could also be a reason that, that keeps us from achieving or from doing the things that we want to do. So you need to surround yourself with people that can actually help you know that it is possible to achieve the dream that you want to have in your business, even when other people have failed, that you can have uh, in place the, the right business ethics, the support for you to be able to benefit from it. So it is also important because we become who we associate with. And that is why you need to get into spaces like Superwoman, because then you meet other business women that are doing things on another level. You attend and you're like, what? This person is making this much in a month. That helps you to think even bigger for your business. You're like, ah, I think I've been dreaming small. Let me see how I can take my business to the next level. Because if you hang around people that are full of the negative energy, negative attitude, you'll also give up on your dream. So have the passion, have the why, the motivation on why you're doing that business, and then surround yourself with people that are going to support you. So it does not end at you writing your vision and all these things that they ask for, but continuously seek this help, continuously seek the support. Because walking the journey of business is not hard. Sometimes it may get lonely, but don't let yourself get lonely on your journey of business because there are people out there that are actually willing to support you. I know that even in the Superwoman program, they give you a mentor, someone who is directly in charge of you. Reach out to them. Tell them, you know what? I'm struggling here. This has failed. Get that. Those are the people that are going to support you to keep going and eventually achieve. But if you think you're going to stay there and people are going to be looking for you to offer you the support, no, you need to be aggressive to go out there and seek the help, to seek and seek the support that you need. That is one of the things that can help you to achieve the goal that you want to achieve, even for your business. Yes, back to you, Alan. I'm telling you, I, I just do want you to stop because ah. this is true. This is celebrating women that mean business. You know, women that mean business from the things you say, how badly do you want this? What are you willing to sacrifice? Who are you willing to, who's do I willing to knock at? How much money are you willing to invest in for yourself everything you're saying you must mean business in, in order to get there it's it's you know you must be determined and i thank you for emphasizing that and also the fact that passion is not enough you know we must be aggressive and the people you surround yourself with thank you marjorie and and uh teddy on that aspect what, what are some of the challenges that you were facing as you are coming up even right now and uh, how can we learn from them uh, thank you very much alan uh, the first challenge as a businesswoman or as a, as a person who does very many things i face first the first challenge i've ever faced in business was the covid period at the printer, we were locked. Uh, we, we are no longer moving. So COVID really affected me, especially in the printing business. I had to pay work, workers when they are not working. I had to pay rent when we didn't work. But when COVID came, I opened my mind because one sector was really, really booming and it was working. That was the agriculture bit of it and the health. So I joined agriculture because I have a background of agriculture. I'm an agriculturist. I started farming. So farming helped me to, to come out of that ditch where COVID had pushed me. So uh, I, when, when I was producing and selling, 
I was willing to pay, I was able to pay this side of the operatory where we maybe got loans to pay rent to pay workers that were not working. So whenever you face a challenge, always make sure you learn from that challenge and do something from that challenge because it's always a lesson. Another challenge I face is uh, I have a challenge of, of workers. Workers. Sometimes since I'm not all the time at work, they normally take advantage and say, because they hold money, they hold cash when I'm not around, they, they take advantage and try to use my money. When I come to audit, of course, you realize it. So what I did to that was, I normally tell them, I tell my workers, this business benefits both of us. If it's, it's, if it's down, I lose and you also lose. So I normally put in culture in them that thing of, yes, this thing is for both of us. We both benefit. And if it fails, we both fail. So we are always in the same direction. We want to see our business thriving, thriving, thriving. Then another challenge I face is, of course, strict supervision. Businesses require, you know, they say the first thing, the first thing you give to your business is love. Eh? That every day, it sees you every morning, even at the garden, it's the plants see you, they feel you, they, they, they know even how your perfume smells. But me, I normally give it little time, little time, little time. So that is a very big challenge. However, I make sure I use more hours eh, of the day. I use more hours. I sleep little and use more hours so that these other things also fill me they feel the passion I have for them so that they can give me what I want. Yes, over to you, Alan. Those are some of the two challenges. Also, okay, the challenge of, I normally bid, in the printer I bid. However, but sometimes I'm laid down money, big surplus money. I know we are going to be there. We are going to be there because we are trying to push more, push more for businesses and we have a lot of savings, and we win those bids because they normally give us chances. Chances as women, business headed women, I mean, businesses that are headed by women, we are given number one. So, yes, over to you, Alan. Those are the few challenges, or some of the challenges I've faced as a businesswoman and as also a woman. Thank you very much. Turning challenges into opportunities. That is the first thing I've picked. You know, it wasn't time to cry about COVID. You picked up something and it's going on. You've also highlighted the issue of um, loving your business. <laughs> they feel your perfume. I've picked that. Mm. But, but um, um, Coach Margarine, I want you to add on to what Teddy has spoken about being an absent business owner. Um, actually, there are some businesses people highlight and say, never do that, never do that, because you won't supervise it, you won't give it the best time you can. You, you must have systems that are way beyond. And uh, it, 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 it's, it's a problem, really. Uh, just as Teddy has highlighted, and uh, just speak to it uh, to the listeners. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. That is true. That uh, usually most businesses do not work because we do not actually give them time. I'm one believer that every business can actually work depending on the effort that you're putting in and the time that you're putting in. Because guess what? That same business, someone out there is doing it and they are thriving. And that's why I say do not just start it because someone else is doing it. You must be able to give it the time. Uh, very many people uh, are engaged into farming, but they do it on their phones. You know, they, they call. And I remember I used to be one of them. <laughs> Back then I had... Uh, uh, I started some business in poultry and piggery, and I would just call, hey, uh -huh, so, so what is going on? And then they would tell me, yeah, send money for food. And I would send, then we need immunization. I send money. Before I knew it, I'd put all my money. And then just one day, they woke up and told me, 
the chickens had died, the, the chicken had died, and then the pigs were eating all my money. <laughs> so it is important for us to get into business, not because we've had it's the, the in thing, but we need to create time for it because every business works, but you need to understand the business and also give it time, especially when it's just starting out. When we talk about business and the things that you're doing, or maybe the different ways you can make money, it is not that it is just business because we have the cash flow quadrant. We know that most people are in the E, which is the jobs, you're employed, and then some people are self-employed. But then other people get to the next level of being a business owner. So what will differentiate you between being self-employed and a business owner is that a business owner then now has systems for systems to work without them. But for you to get to that level, you first have to be there to understand your business, to grow the systems, to train people. People do not want to train people. If you have hired anyone, you need to train them. Even that person that is taking care of your farm when you're not there, you need to train them. Not that you're going to take them to class, but find maybe another farm that is doing well if they have a very a talented person who takes care of the farm. Ask for some time, maybe an hour or two. Take them there. Let them be taught how to, ha to handle the garden and things like that. Most people say that, oh, I started my business, but then my employees are just eating my money and things like that. I'm not getting anything from this business. And then you tell them, you need to train your people. And they say, what if I train, I, what if I train them and they go? And then I always ask, what if you don't train them and they stay? Who is losing? It is your business, right? So as business owners, we need to know that if you want to get to a level where you have systems and you're away from your business, then you need to first of all understand the business, give it time, learn the ins and outs as you build the system for you to be away. It is possible for your business to run without you, but it takes time for you to get there. Some people start the business today and they want to stay at home swinging in their chairs for the business to run. No, first understand it. Uh, get the systems in place that can monitor your business while you're away. But before you do that, be part of the business because yes, you may not be able to, to be doing the, the work, like the, the real work, maybe if it's a farm, you're not the one digging or if you have a tailoring business, maybe you have very many orders and you're not the one tailoring every dress. That means you have to train the people that are there such that if it's your business, it has a touch of you somehow. And how does it get to that level? By you training other people. When you train them and they leave, that's okay. You've added something to the world anyway, right? But if you do not train them and they stay, it is your business that is hurting or that is going to lose at the end of it all. So I know that for us to, uh, to create a very sustainable business, we need to be looking at having the systems such that we, it does not fully rely on you. Because if it fully relies on you, that means you're just self-employed. If your business cannot run, maybe when you're sick, when you're away, that means it is still relying on you. But for you to get to the level where it can go on without you, it takes time and you have to give it the time. You have to be there, okay? Do not just be doing things on the phone. I tell people, okay, balance, I'll come and check over the weekend. That is how people say, oh, I have this I'm employed somewhere. You talked about income streams. I went and started. I started this mobile money business, but people are, are taking my money and things like that. Maybe I have my job. I started this boutique, but the girl I put there is eating my money because you have not taken time to, first of all, understand the business. Some of you do not even know the stock that you have in your business. You don't know how much float you have for those that are running maybe mobile money businesses and all. You are just assuming and relying on these people. And also, if you are choosing to hire people, either hire the real qualified people. And we don't want them because they're expensive. You're like, ah, you just get a cousin's cousin in the village. You say, hey, you have nothing to do. Come and work in my business. That is how you end up killing the business. But okay, if you have decided to go that way, getting that cheap labor, people that talk, know nothing about business, then train them. If you cannot then hire someone that is qualified to help you, to guide you. And also in your business, you need people that are going to support you. We have what you call a dream team. You may not be able to do everything on your own, but you may say, maybe I'm passionate about this business, but I have no idea about accounting. Get a friend who knows accounting to help you put your books in order and tell you, okay, this is how you record them and things like that. Because if you just rely on what you know, then you will not be able to grow the business. And how does that happen? Give your business 
time. And I know that people in the corporate, especially, have that pressure of setting aside hustle, setting aside business. But I tell people, there are businesses that you can do, or there are other side hustles that you can have when you're still fully employed. I shared some of those on my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, Marjorie Natambi, where I share some of those tips. You don't have to quit your job to run a business. And also, it is not necessarily true that you, when you're employed, you just have to start a business to have another income stream. There are very many that you can do that will not give you the stress because if you're employed and you're starting a business at the same time you'll have all this stress because you definitely need to give your business time but there are other options where you can actually uh, invest your money it is making you money we talk about passive income and then you can get that but if you're going the business direction then you need to create time for this business to understand it to hire the right people not just because someone is seated in the village they have nothing to do you bring them there you are hurting your business yet it may yes it may be cheap for you to hire them but you are losing in the long run because they don't know how to handle customers they don't know how to sell your product and then for you you're seated somewhere thinking it is going on the way you want so let us stop those uh having investments on phone especially those that require us to have uh physical presence if you feel if you feel you're not ready for that pressure yet do not open that business because you're going to put that money in that business and you lose it you're not concentrating on your work and then your business is also losing at the same time but there are other options you can do but if you choose to go the business side please create time please create time for it remember i talked about the passion is not enough we have what we call the heart like h e a r t that heart the first one the h is the heart itself the passion for that business that you're starting and then the e is the experience you need the experience that's why i said if you want to start a business you can first go and even be volunteered somewhere learn how that business runs get that bit of experience but then the a is the action put in the work to grow your business it's not going to just happen and one of the books that i love uh is uh, by John Maxwell, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Law number one for you to grow as a person, even for your business, is the law of intentionality. You need to be intentional that if I'm to grow this business, I need to be intentional to learn how business is done. Because these things, let me tell you, the things that are going to change our life in our businesses and even our general life are not taught in school. So you have to be intentional. Even when you go and do an MBA, you may fail to run that business. So you need to seek the real life lessons or the skills. And how are you going to get those from the people that have done the business? And that is why doing maybe volunteering will help you get that experience that you're going to put into action. And then the R when it comes to business is resilience. Business is not straightforward that I'll start today and make profits the next day. No, you need to be resilient to know that, okay, to, for me to earn from this business, it takes time. But some of us, you open that boutique, but whatever dress you sell, you eat the money. You sell the second, you eat the money. That is not how business grows, okay? So you need to have the resilience to understand the dynamics of business, but also you need to have the wisdom to, to know when to let go. Because it is possible that you've tried a business and it has failed and you feel like that is it. And, and you say you want to switch to another. That is also possible. But don't also be the people that jump from one business to another. Then you're not learning and you're not growing. Businesses work. All businesses actually work. If you put in the time to learn about it, to learn its dynamics, because you're not going to get dynamics from maybe a retail shop and you apply the same in agriculture. No. So you need to uh, understand the dynamics in the different field of business you are taking. And the T in the heart is the time. Give it time and also have targets for your business. If you're hiring people, they need to understand your business. Why are you selling the clothes? What is your vision as a person? But some of you can't even communicate the vision to the people you're employing, even if it's just one girl sitting at your shop. They need to understand why are we uh, operating this business, this small boutique? Why are we running this mobile money business? Why are we help them understand? Because then you're helping them sell the business with that in mind but some of you just put them and they sit their job is to come when a client comes they talk to them and that is why some of them have been struggling with handling the customers you find that when you're there yourself you make the sales when you're not there people are not buying because these people don't even know how to handle the clients but when you understand the different dynamics of your business the field that you have taken then it's easy for you to to be able to achieve from it 
So the bottom line is all businesses actually work when you put in the work to understand the dynamics and also put in the time to be there and grow it. And then maybe when you get to a level where you, you feel you've put up systems and you can hire other people and be out of it, that is also very okay. Yes. Sure. Celebrating women that mean business. Everything <laughs> you're talking about, you must mean business. The heart, the attitude, training, creating time, dream team, you must mean business. And, 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 and this is very motivating uh, for me at least. And, and I think um, right now, let's check out uh, the questions that are coming up online. I know we're running out of time. Been enjoying you, uh, coach. I've also been enjoying Teddy definitely. But uh, let us uh, see some of the questions. And because I see we, 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 we've really taken enough of your time. Um, one of the questions from Nansri Tofista says, thank you ladies for sharing with us. Thank you, Senator Bank, for this initiative. Oh, you're welcome. Kindly, can you share the contact line? Uh, the question has dropped off. But I think uh, they need the contacts for both Marjorie and for uh, Teddy, and those will be given. Actually, I will request the technical team. Uh, you could share, or you can contact us on the lines that are running there and we'll be able to give to you. Uh, yes. Alan, just something small. They wanted to yes. join the superwoman. They were asking a contact on how they can join the superwoman. Oh, so I don't know if that provided yes that is great yes just contact us on those lines right now if you're next to a branch just go to that branch but you don't have to go to that branch just call our toll free 0800-200-345 right away right now and there you'll be given everything you need to join you must join superwoman by the way you must join it the benefits are immense and not all have actually been given. I love that loan so much. And, and every other thing that is in there. So please join us. The meets and greets, the exposures are remains. And we also have people like Coach who come and talk to us. Yes. So um, let me read. Uh, yes, thank you for the inspiration. Uh, Teddy, I'm not there, but I believe one day I'll be there. All right. <laughs> Okay, I'm proud of my OG at CKS. Thank you for being a sponsor and a role model for many. Teddy, I'm proud of you. Right, Teddy, thank you for inspiring so many people. And uh, you know what we were talking about was real. Uh, sometimes you could hear, you, you, you hear someone speaking and you keep wondering, but is, is this possible? But when you tell us that in the night, you have to balance books in the night, that, that is... <laughs> That is practical because indeed other people are sleeping. When you say Sundays for community day, then, oh, yeah, Sundays when there's not much business, so you can actually use that day for community. You know, when you say think different, get a solution out of your problem. Yes, what businesses were thriving, what sectors were thriving during COVID, agriculture, we kept eating. You know, whatever you say is really practical. And I think a couple of us have learned. Um, there is Sarah Magaket. She's saying, not easy to connect. What tips do you give us? Um, I'm not sure exactly uh, which, which, which tip she's requesting for, but uh, um, Alan, is there a program? <laughs> We have not that program for Superman. <laughs> we have Superman because of what he said earlier as coach was telling us. As, as we know that uh, women seem to have uh, need lots of support to come up to the level where men are. But not to worry. There are so many things we do for men in the bank as well. We do for our clientele generally. So just come to us and visit us. Uh, about the tips, I think I'll give both of you uh, any tips that you've not mentioned? Because uh, Kate asked that question. She didn't specify, but she said, please share some tips. So I think uh, apart from what we've said, there could be maybe a few things that uh, you can say. 
So maybe prepare that as we look for some other questions. Then maybe you'll respond to three at a go. There is also another question here. Since it's all about women, how can you help us then women try to fulfill our dreams, save them, etc. Anything like support because we inspire us but lead us strong, how to support us in self-employment. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We actually now have products for the young women, for the young, for the youth, not women per se. We have the superwoman, but we also have things for the youth, you know. We have a youth loan specifically for youth, and it has lots of discounts on it. We have uh, accounts. We have the accounts that uh, uh, is, for, is for youth who are still in school between 18 and 26, you know. So there is also that. It also has quite a number of benefits. And uh, we also have the digital accounts where you don't really have to come and learn them because we understand you for, for, for wherever you are. You know, Saint Evolution uh, account is there for you. We have a couple of things for you apart from a superwoman. So if you're a youth and you're a superwoman, you know, you have double, triple advantages. So just visit us and we'll take it from there. Or contact us, call any of these numbers you see running around, starting with the top with 800, 200, 300, Yes, so can low income and in the main gen yes please, yes, you can join us. Thank you very much. We we Active Centenary Bank looks after so much um you know what we locally call Omutwabuli Joe, you know. So we are through the whole pyramid, the lower part of the pyramid, middle and up to the top. Please reach us. Uh, let, allow me at this point to give um, Coach Marjorie and Teddy um, an opportunity to respond to their question about uh, any other tips. Thank you. Is it Teddy going first or I can share? Share first, Marjorie. Share first. Okay, dear. Okay, so maybe one thing I can encourage. Uh, people, women listening in, even the gentlemen, especially those that want to get into business. The thing is, all businesses work if you put in the time, if you put in the effort, because everything that you want to achieve, nothing happens by accident. All the very successful business women and businessmen that you see out there, when you listen to their stories, it has not been an obvious thing. It has not been a straight path. So with business comes a bit of setbacks, challenges, but it is only those that stay the course that actually achieve. So maybe you've started your business and you feel it's still struggling here and there, but I say it can work. Seek the right support, get the mentorship if you can. Join the clubs that we have, like Superwoman, for them to help you on the journey of business, to mentor you. How do you actually put your books in order? How do you achieve that's the goals that you have for your business. How do you take your business to the next level, to a point where it's not just you, you get to a level of hiring and expanding, but also it starts with you having the vision. Do not just start the business because you're looking for food. Then you're just creating a job for yourself. But have an open mindset that I want a business that can actually absorb the unemployment rates in the country. That is how your business will grow because you have a big vision. And let me tell you, the bigger the vision, the more the provision. Some people struggle, oh, I'm even struggling to parent because maybe you are looking at a very small, you're solving a very small problem. They say for you to make money, you need to be solving a problem. So ask yourself, what problem are you solving? Even if you have a boutique, you're solving a problem, but you need to find out which problem are you solving? Because when you understand that problem, then you understand the how big actually the problem is and that will challenge you to think bigger for your business and that will challenge you to seek even more help okay so all businesses work if you put in the work and look for the right support and give it time it will definitely pay off thank you so much for having me uh, thank you very much majo okay so me my last tip is especially to the women uh, women, we have that habit of, in Lugana, it says, Okwesa Sida. Twesa Sida, you feel this is too much for me. I should leave it. Uh, I encourage you to please to join groups, clubs, anything that brings together people of different caliber. 
when you when you're in, in such gatherings in such groups you try to be exposed and say oh if this one can do it it means i can also do it get out of the comfort zone come and meet other women come and meet, meet other people you're going to realize that indeed you have been if not been doing the right thing, these people are going to help guide you, they're going to help you, expose you. Because when we come together, we bring different skills, we bring different experiences, we bring different, very many things to come, and then you learn from those many things. So women, my dear fellow women, I encourage you to join such groups, like the Superwoman Center. But I told you me, I made very super women there. I was, the good thing I was still 25 years, I joined them. These people have mentored me. These people, ah, I'm different because of them. So I encourage you to join these groups so that you can, they help you mentor you, they help you guide you uh, in this life and also in your business or in, in everything, in every sphere of life. Uh, I thank all those that have been on listening. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Centenary Bank, for giving us this opportunity to share with our fellow women. Uh, thank you for putting women at the front. Uh, thank you for also supporting even other things, because I'm a leader in church and I've seen people supporting us very, very much. Thank you very much. Uh, nice day. And over to you, Alan. It's been a pleasure having Coach here with us and having Mrs. Steady retire with us. We are very grateful. We pick lots from what we've seen. And for the questions that we're still getting, we'll answer them and put them up. I still invite everyone who's not in the Superman Club, come join us. Call any of the numbers there. Go to your nearest branch, wherever you can reach, and just join us. Um, Coach Majoru, call you once again <laughs> and another opportunity. Madam Teddy will also be reaching you some other time. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone who's tuned in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for picking this up. We hope it will change you. We hope it has inspired you. We hope there are things you want doing. At least what you learned today will help you move a step higher. Be more disciplined, you know, stop the self-pity as Majo has told as Teddy has told us as well. As well. Listening, train the dream team, the vision, the why, the attitude creating time. There's so much to learn. So thank you very much. And then I never a chief manager of Commerce Affairs and Communication at Sentinel Bank. And we'll still be celebrating with you. Just stay with us. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed Women's Day tomorrow. Bye.